Hello guys, this is Hamudi from Bilo Media. Welcome to my channel. Today we are gonna look, take a look at this guy. This is the Beta FPV Pavo 20. Now I have the Pavo Pico drone, which I really love. It is really small and you can go through tiny spaces and it's perfect for interior and for outdoor in the park and stuff like this. But this one is a little bit bigger and more stable. This one, the Pavo Pico, it's a little bit uh, not so stable when you have some wind outside. So this is why this is perfect for uh, indoor and outdoor. And this is a 2S drone and this one is a 3S drone which makes it a little bit more powerful to make uh, some power loops and some acro maneuvers outside if you want. So let's see what we have in the box. So here we have some props, extra props and the USB-C adapter. So to connect it to the computer you have an adapter because it's a uh, uh, connection like this. I don't know exactly how it's called but it's, uh, you have the adapter basically to connect it to your computer. Here you have a LED strip, which is uh, new for me. I didn't have LED strips on a drone before. And this one, I think it will make it look very, very cool, especially at night. Here we have a bag of screws. This is an adapter to mount a Cadex Vista or I think wax nail, uh, HD0 or something similar. Uh, for mounting the O3 unit, you don't have to use this uh, mount. Here you have some extra screws for the stack. These are the antennas that we will use because they are a little bit smaller, actually much smaller than the original uh, O3 antenna and uh, it, they weigh less than the original, uh, original antenna. And here we have some screws and dampening, dampening uh, grommets to mount the O3 unit cage. You will see in a moment. Here we have the cage. It looks uh, similar to the one on the Pavo Pico, but it's a little bit bigger, especially in the front here. And you have only one in the box. The Pavo Pico came with two. And here is the drone itself. Right away it is a little bit bigger. You feel it. I mean, you see the difference. It's a little bit bigger. This is a two inch drone, prop uh, drone. This is a little bit smaller. I don't uh, know exactly the, the dimension. And the motors are uh, with uh, four screws instead of three uh, screws, as you can see here. Uh, they share the same uh, board unit, IO unit. So it's the same uh, 411, 411, I think, yeah, board with 20 amps, which, which is really nice. And here, what is is really nice that we have a capacitor on the other on the Pavo Pico we don't have capacitor and here we have the 1103 8500 kV motors i think they are really great for this drone they are bigger and uh, uh, 3s it will perform very very well i am really uh, excited about using this drone so let's um, install the O3 unit, but I want to do something different on this. I ordered a frame, this one. I like how it looks. It looks really nice. I like this blue and I want to install this uh, frame directly on, uh, I mean, make the drone with this frame and install the O3 here. So you will know how to change the frame if you want and in the same time uh, install and connect the O3. So in the box we have the frame which by the way it it feels very sturdy. Uh, the Pavo Pico it's not so sturdy like this one. So this is an advantage for me. I think it uh, it is very resistant. And we have a canopy 
or um, O3 mount and the frame and some screws and the battery and stuff like this. We will not go through this bag because we have it already. And you will see some advantages over the O3 frame. The O3 first, uh, not the O3, yeah, the Pavo Pico, sorry, frame, it has uh, a something, um, a, the mechanism here, when mounting the O3 unit, it has dampening grommets and screws and screws here from the bottom in uh, screwed into the uh, this uh, part and they are um, they are normal screws and you can tighten them as much as you want and you can tighten them too much or too loose so you have to find a sweet spot in order to make it tight enough but in the same time to not have jello in your footage the pavo 20 has these uh, inserts the the metal inserts and you can only screw the screw to the maximum point that it allows you so you will not over tighten or keep it loose which is really a good thing for me so first what we have to do it is really easy. We have to unscrew those screw, four screws and to remove this directly. So it's not so complicated. Let's do it. And that's it, which is really fast. Now we have to remove this one to install it on the new frame. Now we are ready to attach it, but uh, let's bend the antenna a little bit. And this one, you have to take it out. Now we are ready to tighten the screws. Super, so this is the maximum that you can tighten them, which is really great because you make sure that it's, uh, it's tightened enough and you can uh, uh, get away with it uh, like this. We have to install now the dampening grommets between the O3 and the frame, these ones. You have to use this part that is bigger on top and this down. Perfect, so it looks like this. And now we can go ahead and install the O3 unit. But first I want to uh, weigh the drone before the O3 to see how much it weights. So the drone alone is 50 grams without the canopy. With the canopy it's 54. The next step is to prepare the O3 and we got to take the antennas out and install the new ones. You have two UFL connectors that you have to take out. And we have those two small antennas. You can cross them like this so they are a little bit uh, shorter because we don't need that long it's a good idea to install the cable first normally i would take out the cables for the s bus for the rc dji rc2 but since the antenna is so small here i think i will uh, leave it and see if i have problem or not with it uh, arming, uh, connecting with my uh, ELRS uh, remote controller. But we will see about this. If I don't like it, I will uh, cut them out after. I had some problems with my long range. I left the cables, the wires, and I had really big problems. I, I didn't know why it is not connecting to my, um, to my remote controller, and I cut the wires after all.
Now we can put the holder for the air unit. We have to slide the antennas like this and put the air unit in place. It sits pretty tight here and now we can use the screws, those screws that are the almost the same but they are not so long as the stack screws and you can see that you have a thread only at the end of the screw which is really nice because we have inserts two in this one. If you can see you have insert two which means that you are not tighten, over tightening this uh, tube, which is great. It is pretty tight here and you have to keep trying uh, to put it in place because it slides out. You have to be patient and take your time. You have those tiny screws to install the camera because uh, you need shorter screws than the original ones. The original ones are like this, so they are taller. And what you can do, you can coil the cable like this, so it will sit tight here. And you can adjust the angle as well here. And it's finished guys. It looks like this. I like the color very much. I am not sure if you can see those in view. We will see outside. But they seem very close. I mean the camera is... Uh, maybe they are in view. I am not sure because the Pavo Pico is completely out. You don't have any protection. Let's wait uh, the drone now with the O3. So it's 95 with the strap and the O3 and the antennas, everything without the batteries. With the batteries, I have three batteries here to test out. I have the GNB 550. I have the Tattoo 550 as well and the Tattoo 450 so with the 450 it weights 134 with the 550 Tattoo 140 and with the GNB 550 it is 138 Great, so I, I think this is the best uh, battery, the GNB 550, but we will see about the flight time and how it behaves outside with those batteries. Perfect, now the dawn is done and the last thing that we have to do is to install this uh, LED stripe. I am really excited on how it will look. I think it is a little bit long and we have to cut it. So here in this drone you have this plug which is for the LED stripe, LED strip and it is it comes here and you have to connect it simply to this uh, plug like this. You have a band that you have to remove and you simply glue it to the frame. A sticky pad like this, yeah and you start attaching it to the frame. Like this, yeah, it's a little bit longer and you have to cut it Let's attach a battery and see how it uh, lights. I think it will light automatically. I'm not sure if it is configured to light, but, but let's see. Wow, <laughs> this is really great, guys. This is really bright. Oh my God.
Wow, this looks amazing. It's really, really bright. Let me turn off the lights. So you see with the lights turned off, it's really, really bright. I love how it looks. It looks amazing, guys. I really love it. <laughs> Super, perfect, guys. I am really excited to test this beauty out. And uh, next we have to configure our ELRS and Betaflight. Uh, so we have the drone uh, ready to fly. I will not go through all of these details uh, in this video because I have the exactly uh, configuration in the ELRS and Betaflight for the Pavo Pico. And it's exactly the same. You almost uh, follow step by step. I mean, I think, yeah, you follow step by step and you do exactly the same as uh, I did for the Pavo Pico for this one and you are ready to go. I'm really excited about this drone, uh, guys. So let's go and fly it outside and see how it behaves. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Thank you. Bye. Oh,